It seems like Russia has invaded Ukraine, which is a bit devastating. So it's uh, almost seven o'clock. Yeah, I stopped off a, in a bar in Bar Fleur. Um, I had a pint, it was good at five o'clock. And then it took me about an hour to drink it, surprisingly. And I asked for a half, and the guy said, une demi, s'il vous plaît. Perfect, oui, came back with a pint. So it was a real salesman. You know, I couldn't deny it and, not, and ask for it to be returned. Anyway, what that meant is that I had to drink that quite quickly. And now I have to find Appropriate, appropriate place to camp. Now, interesting enough, there's a lot of German bunkers here. The war wasn't um, for nothing, I suppose, because they might fournir or provide a place for me to um, do camp. Here's such a German bunker. But I'm not going to sleep in it. I slept so well last night. Cozy as you like. I oh, just woke up. <laughs> it's half, half eight. I think I woke up only a couple of times. I don't really want to go get up. I'm so comfortable. I mean, this grass is amazing. Oh, but I need to wee. So I decided to have a um, grass matinee, which means like a, a little lion. And it started raining. Oh, I can't be bothered to go out there. I'll wait, for, I'll wait for the rain to clear. And then suddenly, a giant gust ripped some of the pegs holding my basher down the ground and everything started to go bloody crazy and I was frantically trying to secure the basher so I could keep my stuff underneath dry and then I just had to stick in and try and clear my shit up. Anyway it's a miserable day. I'm having my apple which I didn't eat yesterday. It tastes very nice. So I found a little bit of shelter. Someone has kindly lent me their porch. I mean, there's no one in. I mean, in Normandy, there are lots and lots of holiday homes and they're empty. Thought I'd utilize it just to brew some tea and uh, roads go ever, ever on over rock and under tree. By caves where never sun has shone, by streams that never find the sea. I think this place is called Rivel, something like that, two hours. Anyway, it's got a beautiful church and a chateau in it. I'm stopping there for lunch. God, it's ancient. Sorry. Uh, oh God, gosh, it's ancient. Do a little bit, just to have my lunch. And an old man comes up to me, very affable, very friendly. And he just invited me to come get a drink or some water or whatever in that house just down there so after i have my my bread and butter and pate i bought yesterday some confit de foie it, uh, it's a turkey and, and pork no man just took me in gave me some water and then basically kicked me out but it looks like there was a a bunch of old people in there playing bridge or something but you see it's presbytery i've just connected myself to the internet and uh what's the time now 20 past to the afternoon French time and uh, it seems like Russia has invaded Ukraine which is a bit devastating I didn't think it was going to happen it's just a bit shocking Look at this. You see all these? These are all pots which they put out there. That is not just water, that is a massive farm. And there create the conditions for 
things like mulls and, and mussels, you know, and uh, other shellfish like wheats, uh, I forget the English name. Oysters, yes, oysters. They process them here. Well, these are particularly oysters. These are oyster cages. The story goes with uh, shell farming is that maybe some 800 years ago, I don't, I'm not going to get the details of the story correct. A Scotsman who used to uh, catch birds near Edinburgh on the, uh, on the flats and low tide and whatnot with his cages. He was sailing on a ship. They had a shipwreck. Uh, in south of Brittany, in France. He didn't have the means to get back to Scotland, so he sort of set himself up there selling uh, caught birds, which he would catch on the, um, the great low flats of uh, these great bays. Anyway, um, when he left his nets and cages in the water, and the water would come up, he discovered that the, the shellfish would grow, would cling on to the, his nets and whatnot. And that is, one of the stories of how shellfish farming came about. A Scotsman marooned in France. There must be something to being marooned in France that creates a whole new industry. Maybe me being marooned in France will create some sort of industry which we have yet to conceive. Yeah, now I'm going to go to this bedroom, or at least, and uh, do some work. And here I am, my first pleasant evening at La Chaumière. This is my little room for two nights. I'm going to use, try and spend a day making the videos and writing my letters to Rona. Next time, it's, you have many more days between I do something like this. And the goal is, is to, to try and meet people and see if I can actually not have to pay for these because you know it's quite expensive when you add them all up i need to polish my boots i mean look at them they are worn down if you want to follow my adventure further please just like subscribe and um, press the notification button most importantly you can help my gofundme where i'm trying to raise money in aid to tackling homelessness with the charity saint mongo's the link for that will be down below. Obviously, you can go follow me on Instagram at A Folly in France or at Dominic de Bonamy. A Folly of France follows this journey in France, and the other one is just me, Dominic de Bonamy. Also, I have started a Substack where my Letters to Rona blog will be uploaded, and you can read that in full if you are a subscriber, uh, but you can read half the blog on my WordPress, dominicdebonomy.blog. Links down below. And if you're feeling really kind or, and you like the video so much, go to my Patreon and you can support me there. 15% of all money on there will go towards my fundraising. So thank you very much and come back next time.